very much the definition by Michael Lloyd of synchrosession therapy as a minimalism constructive approach, an approach to therapy that in one session try to achieve the best, try to achieve what the client needs. Um, another definition that I like very much is by Jeff Young. Um, he says that single session therapy is a service delivery model. You put yourself in a mindset uh, for which you help client. You can, you could help client just in one session. Um, we also say in our book that uh, single session therapy is not an approach. In a, I mean, it's not a theoretical approach, but it's a method. You have guidelines, and if you follow that those guidelines, you can help client to achieve the best in that session. You can maximize the the session. So there are different way to define single session therapy, and uh, basically they also say that you try to do the best in just one session. It's funny because if I remember well, the World Single Session Therapy was given by the publisher of the first book of Moshe Talmon, Single Session Therapy. So it's probably born as a, a marketing name, you know, as a name to, to sell the, the books. Uh, if I remember well, uh, Moshe Talmon uh, um, uh, in the beginning uh, didn't like that, but the publisher won that, uh, that, that, um, the title. Um, I think it was a, um, a lucky thing because it helped to move interest around single session therapy. There are many other uh, names like like um, one at a time therapy, for example, or walk-in therapy. It, um, in every way you call it, uh, it's uh, always the same thing. The idea to help the client to achieve the best in every single session. Because you can uh, also have many other sessions and uh, achieve the best in every single session of more and more sessions. The time wasn't perfect 30 years ago. Um, in, this, in, in this moment, this very moment, uh, all the public health care system are in crisis, uh, in a financial crisis, uh, in a resource crisis. They need many professionals to help uh, so many people that are asking for, uh, uh, for therapy, for psychotherapy. You know that depression, for example, is uh, for the WHO one of the, no, probably the first cause of disability in, um, in the world. But there are not so many professionals because there are not so many monies for helping clients uh, um, in a very brief way and in the moment they need. So I think that single session therapy now is a, a good reply, a good uh, answer to, to this problem. And another thing is that probably um, therapists, private practitioner, are not so, um, how to say, uh, they don't like the idea that they will have uh, less session, but this is not correct because if you think about how many people now are asking for a uh, uh, quick way to help them to solve their problem, quick and ethical, of course, ways to help them problem, um, you can imagine that single session therapy is a good way to reach more and more people. So I think these two are two of the probably many reasons why single session therapy um, is exploding in a good way just in the last years. Moshe Talmon uh, said that um, he was in the office of his uh, manager, his uh, director at the Kaiser Permanente, and he discovered that uh, um, there are there was um, a huge quantity of files about dropouts, and he discovered that um, many people attended to psychotherapy just for one session. So Moshe Talmon with Michael Hoyt and Robert Rothman start to um, uh, wondering why this is uh, happening, and they discover that many people just attend for one session because they say 
it's all it's all that I need. I don't need many other sessions. And actually, this is funny because uh, uh, going uh, uh, in the past, seeing if uh, uh, other person, other other professionals uh, discovers uh, something like that, they they saw that uh, even uh, Sigmund Freud did just uh, uh, one session therapy for three time or that uh, David Mellon uh, discovers something like that in a research, or uh, Bloom discover um, the, the same thing. So um, it, it, it was just for case that Moshe Talmon discovered that, that start the research that uh, bring him and his group, Michael Hoyt and Robert Rosenbaum, to develop the single session therapy method. Oh, well, there are many evidence about single session therapy, about the effectiveness and the efficacy of single session therapy. Uh, the very first research was uh, conducted by Michael Hoyt, uh, Moshe Talman, and Rosen Robert Rosenbaum. And they did a very first uh, research on around 60 person, and they found that uh, um, around 60% uh, of them says that one session is enough, and then uh, over 80% maintain the result uh, uh, at the follow-up saying uh, one session is enough, thank you, I don't need many other sessions. In the, in the last 30 years, we have many, many research on single session therapy. Also, RCT, uh, tr uh, randomized clinical trials, and empirically supported treatments, and uh, um, four or five uh, review of the literature. So, many research that single session therapy is, is effective. And, uh, an interesting thing is that it's effective uh, with any problem. We have single session therapy research with uh, panic attacks, uh, OCD, anxiety problems in general, and with child and adolescent and family, and with uh, alcohol abuse, and with depression. So um, we have a huge literature about single session therapy methods with different kind of uh, uh, approach with single session therapy CBT, single session therapy uh, strategic, uh, with strategic therapy, with solution focus, and uh, so go on. Um, I think that who lose if single session therapy doesn't become the norm is a client, because we we have a fact. The fact is that clients attend to one session if you do single session therapy, but also if you don't do single session therapy. What I mean is that Moshe Talman found that people just attend spontaneously to one session and then drop out. But Moshe Talman also discovered that they don't drop out. Many of them just say, I attended to one session because one session is enough. I'm good now, I have the strategies, or I solved my problem, or it's okay for me, I found something useful. So if single session therapy doesn't become the norm, client will have the most problems. But it's also true that professional can have problem if single session therapy become, became, the, became the norm, because if they don't change their mindset, this can be a problem. Uh, what I mean? I mean that um, for the research, there are about 60 to 90 percent of people that can um, find very useful to attend to therapy, but they never, never phone to a therapist to ask um, a therapy, to start a therapy. With single session therapy, you can reach more easily those kind of people. Why? Because more of them never call a, a, um, a therapist because they think, oh, they're too, mon too much money, too much time, or my kind of problem is not good for a long-term therapy or also for, I don't know, a brief therapy of uh, 10, uh, 10 sessions. But if you say, listen, we can start with one session and then we can say, 
uh, if we need more session or if one session is enough. If you say that, you can reach those people and depend on research, this huge crowd of people are around 60 to 80 to 90, sorry, percent, a huge quantity. So um, professional will have a problem with single session therapy if they don't change their mindset. And the mindset is that the, you have the possibility to provide one session that is not the only possibility that you provide to your client, but is one more possibility that you provide to your client. I think that solution focused therapy is uh, very close to uh, single session therapy, but in the way that it's very easy to do a solution focused uh, single session therapy. Um, they are um, uh, all oriented on resources. Uh, they put the person in the center of the therapy as a, the, the, the main character of the, of the therapy, of course. And they want to help people to um, find their strengths and to find their personal way to solve the problem. But it's important to remember that single session therapy is not an approach, it's a method. And as a method, you can have, as I said before, a solution focused single session therapy, a CBT single session therapy, and uh, so on. So yeah, I think that single session therapy will be more and more the norm in, in the future. Uh, if I have to think um, what are some signs that um, push me to believe that, one is, as I say, that uh, we are on our planet uh, seven billions of person and um, we will become eight billions in a few years probably. And so we will have many people asking for effective therapy and probably for brief, quick therapy. And, you know, you can decide, you can say, no, I don't want to give you brief therapy. I don't want to give you single session therapy. But if people are asking for that, this is not uh, a smart way to uh, do therapy with them. I'm not saying that you uh, have to say yes to everything that people uh, uh, ask to you, but just that you um, could consider that it could be uh, good to propose something that simple people already do. Because if you think people just attend f uh, to one session the most of the time, even if you don't do single session therapy. Other signs are that in the last five, six, seven years, we start to have many books uh, about single session therapy. Uh, we have um, English books, but also our Italian book, and uh, there is a book in uh, uh, Finland, in Sweden, sorry, uh, by Martin Soderquist. Um, Michael Hoyt is doing a lot of um, workshop around uh, uh, the, um, the world and we are starting to do a, um, a lot of workshop in, in Italy and there are many workshop and three international congress. Um, the next one will be in November in uh, uh, Australia, uh, in, in Melbourne. So many signs that there is a, a huge interest uh, on a single session therapy. I think the therapists are starting to say that it's it's useful, that it's what clients are looking for, and that it's effective. I think that this will be the future, or probably this is the present. You can have a single session therapy with family, with individuals, with couples, and also with childs and uh, teenagers. Also, there are research about uh, group single session therapy, and we can have single session therapy in clinical settings, but also in uh, other kind of settings. I don't you know, for example, single session therapy for uh, professional, uh, for supervisors, and so on. So there are no limits to uh, achieve the best uh, just in one session, in uh, one meeting.
it is very interesting because there are uh, um, many services just, uh, um, how to say, uh, developed around the single session therapy idea. There are walking clinics, walking service, uh, also single session clinics. Uh, here in Italy, we are starting to propose the walking logics. Uh, we mean logics because we are saying to professional, also to uh, private practitioner, to propose um, a single session days, to propose to their uh, clients, to the people, to just attend for one session without appointment. And this is very interesting because this helps client to, um, uh, to, to break the resistance about uh, how uh, could be a psychotherapy, I don't know, it's scaring me too, too long, and something like that. And also, it's helping people to uh, attend to a session in a more quick way. There are uh, not so many course, courses of single session therapy around the world. In Australia, we have uh, Jeffrey Young and uh, Burley Center. In uh, Canada and in Texas, we have uh, Monty Bobbill and Arnold's Live. And uh, around the world, we have Michael Lloyd in California, but around the world, they travel around the world to teach single session therapy. And in Israel, of course, we have uh, Mushi Talmon, and uh, in Sweden we have Martin Soderquist, and in uh, England we have um, uh, Windy Dryden, and in Italy, of course, we have uh, me and the Italian Center of Single Session Therapy. Uh, probably we have uh, other professional, I, I don't know them, I'm sorry uh, for not quoting them. And it they seems, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I did just a long line, they seems so many people, but we are not so many, so uh, we need many other people to uh, to do single session therapy, to teach single session therapy. If you are uh, if you are going to one of these um, the session, you probably will learn two things, two very important things. One thing is the method, the, the technique. Um, there are not. Sp so specific technique, um, techniques that there is no one technique that help you to achieve the more. You do that and you will do a single session therapy. No, that's not possible. But there are techniques that can help you line guide. We can say line guide that can help you to achieve the more from just one session. And then there is the mindset. And it it's very important on the mindset because you can think that, oh, the mindset, it's easy, I just say, let's do a single session therapy. But if you don't have the right mindset, if you don't really believe and if you don't really understand that one session can be enough, you simply don't look in the right way, you don't look in the right corner and you can't see how to help people to help themselves just in one session. You almost don't need to market single session therapy. Um, in our center, we are starting to receive um, uh, phone call from people saying, hello, I want a single session therapy, or hello, I want to do a gift to my husband, I want to uh, give him a single session therapy. Um, of course, you have to say to those people, uh, it's okay, we can do a single session therapy, but you need to know that we can't know if a single session therapy is enough until you finish the single session therapy. But um, what I'm trying to say is that people understand the gift of single session therapy, the value of single session therapy. And they understand that when you say single session therapy, you don't mean that single session is the norm, that it's, uh, um, it's automatic that one session will be enough. They understand that probably will be enough, that maybe will be enough, but uh, you will see, you together will decide. But uh, after that, uh, we uh, we mostly need not to sell single session therapy, but to uh, because people understand the, the idea of single session therapy, but to um, help people know that 
we do single session therapy, that there is the kind, this kind of service. And a way to do that is talking about that using your blog, your uh, YouTube channel, uh, talking about that, that with colleagues because the main resistance are not from clients but from therapists. So talking about that, um, Michael Lloyd, uh, uh, it's been uh, interviewed by um, a magazine from uh, Ofra, uh, you know, um, and it's about 3 million copies, I think. So uh, this is a huge opportunity to talk about single session therapy and write books, write articles, uh, talk uh, in Congress, um, talk, 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 talk about single session therapy. This is the best way to help people to know another way to help them in a very effective and brief way. Thank you, Ben, for this uh, interview. Thank you for this brilliant question. I very like them. And it's an honor for me to be interviewed by you. And I hope to see you soon in Italy. And goodbye. <laughs>